to, to, as you can see. So um, the one on the 14th is on a Thursday night. We had a, a special program for that, that that's coming up. Um, our talks will go through no, the first part of November, um, but when we shut down, we don't do presentations in the end of November and December, just because most people are kind of going in the holidays and uh, getting out and doing other things. So um, that's what's happening. With that, I'm gonna stop sharing. And Art, I'm gonna let you go ahead and share. Um, I, I would like to introduce our speaker tonight. Um, Art Fuller and Art, we do have your presentation. I can see it. Um, Art is uh, with the Cowles County Master Gardener who has been with us and we're just really glad to have him. A wealth of information and appreciate um, his uh, knowledge that he's willing to share. So with that, Art, I'm gonna turn it over to you and, and certainly appreciate your time and effort that you're putting in tonight. All right, thanks a lot, Gary, appreciate it. And welcome everybody to extending the growing season, which is coming faster than we think it's coming. <clears throat> the rains are starting to come probably within the next week or so. So that's that's going to be an interesting factor to all the gardening. And we'll see how things play out. <clears throat> if you could, please mute your microphones. And, so, and if you do have a question, you can just press on the space bar and speak, and that should uh, clear you for the time being, and then just lit up on the space bar. <clears throat> You'll also be able to you put a question in the chat box, and I'll make sure it gets to you, Art. Oh, great. That'll work, too. <clears throat> All right. So the only way to prevent is to protect your plants. So protection from continuous rain and cold can extend the life of your garden, and we were just talking earlier about what the rain will do to the tomatoes. They, you can, they just start splitting on you and the cold itself uh, also deters the plants from growth. So here's some of the rain coming and this is what can happen when the plants get uh, frozen. Topics we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover the damages caused by rain and frost, just briefly on a few, and then show you a little bit about the long view rainfall graph, frost days, microclimates, um, facts, and ways to extend the growing season, setting up and types of row covers and garden fabric, and then types of season extenders. Okay, prolonged rains can cause all kinds of problems in the garden. First of all, you don't want your, your vegetables sitting in a pool, a swimming pool, because it'll end up causing all kinds of fungal diseases and rot to the plant. Slugs, uh, they'll definitely encourage the slugs. It also encourages leaf disease and viruses and all kinds of stuff to get onto your plants. And that's what Chehalis and Centralia look like in 2007 when we had all the rains and problems with some of the dams up above. But that was a pretty nasty year there and it sure caused a lot of problems up, up where I'm at. Early cold. Early cold stunts the growth and frost can damage hardy plants. So here's some cucumbers and what the cold does to the cucumbers. And here's a tomato and what the cold will do to the tomatoes. Our graph of the rainfall for uh, the Longview area, as you can see, June, July, and August, very, very little rain. And while well, September so far has had very little rain. This year, it's been, I think they've been saying it's been about 93 days without rain in our area. But next week, or this, this coming Friday, excuse me, is supposed to start the rains. And we'll see how long they last and what they're, you know, the extent of the rains and how much rain we get. Here's some important dates to be concerned about. 
these will be these will change in accordance to your climates, your altitudes, and all kinds of other things. But for the Longview area, the first predicted frost of the year is approximately 23 October. And then the last frost day of 2022, which is another important day, is approximately the 9th of May. And these factors will be, will change in accordance with altitude, tree blockage, microclimates, walls, um, hills, et cetera, anything that changes that climate. And we have a little microclimate. I live in Winlock and I can have frost on my property, but the house below us might not have any frost at all. We can have snow up here on our altitude. We're sitting at about 600 feet. And the, at the end of my driveway, which is about a quarter mile, they don't have any snow down there. So just this little bit of uh, microclimate makes a big difference just from the different altitudes. And there's another look at the dates once again. Okay, location of your garden is very important. So microclimates, you can plant next to a wall, a building, that'll keep the warmth in. Your uh, tree blockage, that blocks the shade, but it also blocks the winds. Hills do the same thing, blocks the wind. These all play important parts in your garden and where you wanna plant your garden. So there's a lot of decision-making when you're looking at the microclimates throughout your property. You wanna choose, anytime you put a garden in, you wanna choose the warmest location and with the most sun. Don't plant in the same spot that is prone to early frost, bottom of a hill or exposed to a lot of wind. And once again, you, get, you wanna plant where your garden will get the most sun as possible during the autumn and the winter and summer. And this one's, this one's very important. You wanna make sure it's easily accessible. And another thing you wanna add, you wanna make sure you have water accessible to your garden. Here's some facts. Cold weather will not kill hardy plants. It simply slows their growth rate. And when I'm talking about hardy plants, oh, we'll come to that one, I'm gonna talk about the hardy plants. Okay, for every rise of 18 degrees, Growth rate will double, but that guideline is only applicable for an air temperature range of 40 to 98 degrees. So for every, for every 18 degrees above 40 degrees, your growth rate of your plant is gonna double. And here's your hearty vegetables that we were talking about. Your spinach, your walla walla sweet onions, garlic, leeks, rhubarb, rutabaga, broccoli, kohlrabi, kale, cabbage, chicory, Brussels sprouts, corn salad, arugula, fava beans, radish, mustard, Austrian winter pea, and turnips. Whenever you plant again, make sure you get as much sun as possible. And you wanna, if you're on a slope, you wanna have the, your garden facing the south facing slope if possible. Some more facts. Here's some semi-hardy semi vegetables. These will last, uh, these will withstand temperatures 28 to 32 degrees. Those are your beets, your carrots, your parsnip, your lettuce, your chard, your uh, pea, your cabbage, endive, radicchio, cauliflower, parsley, and celery. And those are pretty good hardy plants for in the, in the we, you can plant those early. And you can plant them later in the season and you'll still get them up into the fall. Okay, for spring or for beets, spring market carrots and parsnips, the tops will die, but the roots will tolerate the lower temperatures. So just because the tops are dying off doesn't necessarily your plant is dead. 
Okay, now we're going to start getting into the meat of the topic, ways to extend the growing season. There's all different types of ways. You can put row covers or garden fabrics. And here's just some illustrations of them. You can use cloches or low tunnels. You can build high tunnels. Greenhouses. Cold frames. And then hot boxes. So there's all kinds of methods that you can extend your growing season and protect your plants from the winter and the colder weather. And we're gonna discuss these, each one of these individually. So anytime you're using a garden fabric or a row cover, you're best to just uh, build some sort of framing structure to to put this row cover or garden fabric over and you want to ensure it doesn't touch your plants. You can use PVC pipe and bend it into an arc using rebar pushed into the ground to anchor. And there's a sample of PVC pipe. You just put, you got a raised bed right there. You can put your rebar, either drill it into the top of the raised bed or put it beside there and clamp it and then uh, get your PVC pipe and just bend it right over top and go from one rebar to the other side of the rebar. So basically you're gonna go from this side, have the rebar right here, and then another piece of rebar on this side and just take your PVC pipe and bend it right over top, all the way from rebar to rebar. And you can put several ribs all the way down there and then just put your row cover right across the, the raised bed and that'll protect it. You can buy commercial frames or you can make your own frames. You can use a, a nine gauge wire, 50 feet for $16.45, just under an eighth inch in diameter. And you wanna cut it about 76 inches each piece. And then this'll cover a three by four foot bed. Space them about two to four feet apart. And there's your wire. And you just cut it to the length and set it in place. If using row covers, you wanna make sure the fabric does not touch the plant because that just, the, the cold and the, the frost will just uh, conduct, uh, basically uh, just transfer right through that fabric right to your plant. So you wanna give make sure there's an airspace between your, um, your row cover and your plant. You wanna make sure you secure the fabric down. If you wanna chase the fabric, don't secure it. The wind blows, that fabric's gonna go all over the place. So you wanna secure it. You can use pegs but a two by four or sandbag or brick will work just as well. And here's some pegs you can use and just clip it to the, to the uh, row cover. You can stake it down with pins, with uh, metal, metal uh, pins or hooks. This way is the easiest way I've seen is just put your row cover over top of your frame and then weight it down with sand or rocks or uh, brick or anything you want and just weight it down, Either even pieces of wood. I've seen people lay uh, uh, two by fours down right along the side of that and it'll hold your uh, row cover over to protect. Okay, now we're gonna get into the different types of row cover and the garden fabric. The first one we'll talk about is your frost blanket. This is one of your heavier cloths. And you can see it's not very transparent. So it's, um, it's a thicker material. And it'll protect from uh, 24 to 26 degrees Fahrenheit. 
but the only problem with this row cover is it only it only allows 50% of light penetration. And here's some prices. I just verified these prices the other day because things have changed since COVID. So you can, this was a territorial seeds, a six by 20. So that's six foot by 20 feet is about $24.95. Amazon six by 50 foot was 29 and 11 cents. And then AM Leonard, you can get one that goes down to a 10 degree Fahrenheit and it's a six foot by 250 feet. And that was $124.59. So depending on how much you need and where you wanna to go to is where you wanna look it up. But there's all kinds of places out there. These were just a few I looked up. Okay, this one here is a little bit thinner. It's called Rime. So it's a thinner type of row cover. And this protection is down to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It lets a lot more light in, 75 to 85% light transmission. And prices, five ounce to six ounce per square yard. Territorial seed, 67 inches by 20 feet was $20.95. Amazon had $31.24 for a 10 foot by 50 foot. I didn't find any at AM Leonard. I don't know if they go that, uh, I don't know if they sell the remake type cloth. So GrowGuard is uh, used for germination and insect protection. That's, that's even a, a lighter material. So it's similar to Rime, but it's gentler on the tender young plants. 85% light transmission. And it protects to 27 degrees with no wind. So it's good protection, good light transmission, and it's gonna be a cheaper product for you. Six ounce, six foot by 20 feet long is $16.95, and that was a territorial. Amazon had a six foot by 25, or the six or it was $12.99, and the six foot by 200 was $49.92. AM Leonard had a five ounce, that was six foot by um, 250 feet. And it's $33.59. Okay, types of row cover again. Insect barrier. This is lighter yet. So this protects plants from insect damage. It's just a micro mesh, like a screening material. 90 to 93% light transmission. Even cheaper yet, six foot by 20 is 14 by, or 14.95. Amazon was six, uh, six and a half feet by 15 feet for 13.99. AM Leonard was the same price, was 33.59 for the six foot by 250 foot. This would be the last type here. It's called grow therm. We have a lady up here that uses this all the time and she grows watermelons and cantaloupes. And she basically just cuts her wire. She does, she buys the coil wire, cuts it. She puts her drip irrigation system in there and she leaves her plants go all summer long because the watermelons she grows and the cantaloupes she grows are very, um, they need a lot of heat and they need a lot of protection. But this is a clear perforated plastic. It's designed extra warmth and it gives you a 10 degree increase of heat. So your outside temperature is gonna be 10 degrees less than the inside temperature. And it's great for melons and sweet potatoes. Prices of this, I only found this at Territorial and it's six foot 
by 20 feet for 1495. Okay, we're gonna get into some of the kits that are available out there. There's a lot of commercial kits. So the choice is up to you and it's gonna be what you need and what you want it to, you know, how you want it to fit your plants and whatever fits your budget. So here's one sample. And this was on Amazon for $10.99. So this was a basically a cloche and it's all assembled there. All you have to do is set this over top of your plants. This was at Walmart for $66.99. And here's another type of covering, $49.95 on Amazon. So there's all different types. Okay, so we're now we're going to get into the cloches and low tunnels. So there's lots of options depending on your needs. Most are about 12 to 18 inches tall, two to three feet wide. So they're basically just there. Um, you put you build your framework up and you can cover it up with the row cover or whatever you're going to cover it with. And if it gets too hot, you can remove it during the heat of the day and then cover it back up at night. So this is basically using the wire and they went from side to side and they're stretching the, the row cover over top. And you can see they have it all weighted down on the side so it doesn't blow away. This is a commercial grower here. And here's another, another method using the same, it looks like wire again. And just stretch the row cover over and just make sure it doesn't touch your plants and anchor it down. And you can see this, this one here is a little bit raised up so they get some ventilation on the right side of it. And I think they just did that on purpose just to give it some air circulation. And here's another sample. This is on a raised bed. And it looks like they use PVC piping here and they've probably got it um, clamped to the side of the raised bed and the, the PVC pipe is stretched down. They put a center set of PVC. So these are probably um, zip tied to the, the arcs going over there. And you zip tie this, this stability uh, piece of pipe across the top of it so it doesn't rock back and forth. And then they just put the row cover right over top. And then they've got this anchor down. It looks like they use uh, brick all the way down it. So there's all kinds of cheap ways to do this stuff and easy to do. You just have to use your imagination on a lot of it. Okay, cloches. At one time they used to be a small dome, but they've changed the meaning of it. Now it's anything, well, we'll show, we'll show pictures of it. But it's a cloche, is a translucent dome shaped cover for protecting uh, or forcing outdoor plants. Original used to be a glass dome, but has changed. So this is what they originally look like right here. You can make one out of a water jug. Just cut the bottom out of it and cork the top. But now these are even considered cloches. And the same as this, this looks like they used, it looks like they used like um, fiberglass um, roofing material, clear, and, and they just bent it into an arc over top of the plants. And you've got a, you've got a cover and protection. This one here is getting a little fancy. They got it on a raised bed. <clears throat> it's on hinges and you can just lift it off and it gets the sun and it gets the air circulation. And then at night, you can just tip it back over and cover everything back up. And there's another type. So high tunnels are basically the same thing, but they're higher. And it usually has a, a walk-in door or 
something that you can drive equipment through. So they are unheated and they just have man or accesses for your uh, man doors or equipment. So they're just bigger. High tunnels are just bigger than low tunnels. And here's an example of a high tunnel. And another example. And one more. So greenhouses. A greenhouse is a, is a structure and it's chief, chiefly made of transparent material. And you can have them regulated. You can put water inside. You can have water piped in. You can have electricity piped in. You can have fans, all kinds of stuff. It depends on what you want to do and, and, and of course, the expense of it all. So here's some samples. This, is a, this was a, actually a friend of mine's greenhouse. They just bought this, and this is all glass. And here's another exam example of a greenhouse. This is a, on the side of a house or a garage. And this one here is made out of fiberglass. These are pretty popular. The only thing I've heard bad about the fiberglasses is after about 10 to 12 years, the fiberglass starts breaking down and, it, and you have to change it out. And here's one that somebody just made out of windows. So if you, like I said, if you've got an imagination, you can make just about, you can make just about anything. All right, so when I, when I became, I became a master gardener back in 2014, and I just decided while well, we moved up to Washington in 2005, and decided we wanted to build a, put a greenhouse on the property. So just for gardening purposes and for overwintering plants and stuff like that. So I, I come up with this idea. I, I became a master gardener in 2014, started looking at everybody else's greenhouses. And then about after about a year of planning, I started installing one. So greenhouses can cost quite a bit. So this is just a simple greenhouse. I purchased my greenhouse for $450 through Harbor Freight. It was a 10 by 12. I laid a concrete footer, which cost me $100. Thank you. I put weed block down, which cost me $10. I laid gravel over top of the weed block, which was $30. Then I built shelving and benches and uh, all the hardware that that came to about $120. And then I ran conduit and water piping underneath the concrete prior to laying the concrete. That was $7. A little bit of muscle, a little bit of sweat, a little bit of head scratching and approximately $720 later, this is what it looked like. So it's a nice looking, a very easy to maintain greenhouse. So this was put up in uh, 2015. And I, I stuck it in a, uh, an area and I'll show you the area a little better on the next slide. So this is my raised bed and this is my garden area. So you can see I've got raised beds going around it. And those raised beds are about four and a half feet in, in uh, width and 25 feet long. And I made all three of these the same size. And there's a reason why I did that is because I got a water manifold that runs right on top of that brickwork because these are made from uh, cinder block with caps on it. And I got a manifold, a water manifold running right over here. I got uh, water in this corner and water in this corner. So th that's why I wanna make sure everything's essential or easy to get it adequate and easy to get at so I don't have to tote water. So I ran a valve right off this manifold right into the greenhouse, so I've got water into there. I put, uh, I'm a lazy person, 
So I put um, automatic vent openers here. So when the it heats up, these vents, auto, there's four vents on there automatically open. And I've got my compost bin sitting right in front of over here. And I got a soil bin right over here also. So everything's pretty accessible. There's blueberries here. There's over on this side, I've got a grape arbor. And then I've got a lawn and tractor building right off to the side over here. And everything is fenced in. So I made everything pretty accessible for that greenhouse area. And it wasn't too, too expensive to build, but it works great. And you can see by the time this picture here was in the summer of 2017. So my beds are uncovered. And if you look real close inside that greenhouse, you can see a lot of pots and stuff on top of the benches. That's all my corn and all my peppers and all my tomatoes and everything I'm ready to transplant into the garden because the manifold's all set up, ready to go. So I'm just getting ready to take everything out of the greenhouse and put it in the garden to grow. So some more uh, season extenders are cold frames. A cold frame is just a structure built on the ground and it has some sort of transparent roof so the heat can come in. And here's somebody just come up with the idea and put straw bales down and left the center open and then put windows on top of it. That works as a great cold frame. Here's a little bit fancier cold frame, all done with looks like um, looks like uh, siding, like a roofing material, the corrugated roofing material, clear, and it's just going. They just framed it in and and uh, put sides on it and a top, and this top should be hinged so it can open and close to um, cool it down when it gets too hot. And here's another example of a cold frame. So these, these, you just, what you want to do, if you want to overwinter a plant, or if you want to have young um, saplings that are growing in there, just stick them in that cold frame, close it up, and let them sit in there, and that heat from the sun will just radiate in there, and it'll keep your, um, keep your young saplings dry, and it'll keep them uh, nice and warm and they just grow like crazy and here's what I was pretty impressed with right here this one here we saw and this is made out of bottles just uh, two liter bottles or uh, regular uh, water bottles and they just made a frame and they stuck uh, supports down and ran the bottles right through the um, the sticks and mounted the sticks right to the framework and this has a hinge on it, this lifts up, or there's hinges here where you can open up this door and go inside. There's a hinge there and a hinge there. So there's two different ways to get into this cold frame. And it works pretty nice. It keeps about, uh, about 10, 15 degrees difference in temperature from outside to inside. And it's just a cheap way to do it and a good way to use water bottles and anything else. Another type of season extender. I haven't seen too many of these around here, but they, on the East Coast, hot boxes were a big thing. And I'm sure people use them around here. I just never use the hot box around here. But it's a heated bed. It's the same, it's a heated cold frame, basically. So you build a frame and underneath this frame is usually you put manure or a heating element or some sort of heating cable some people have even used hot water pipes and they just put them underneath the surface of the ground and they use about a six inch uh, planting medium and you just plant right on top of those pipes or manure or cables and it keeps everything warm. So here's a sample with using manure. Once again, they used a framework with a lid and you can see the manure down below here. They got about two feet of manure and then six inches of earth above it, and they just plant right in here. And that manure will radiate heat all the way up through and keep everything nice and warm. And here's one that you can use uh, cables, 
And what they did was they had this thing wired for electricity. There's a plug-in unit here. They have a thermostat that operates this uh, receptacle. And if it gets too hot, it shuts this down. So this is a little bit more sophisticated and somebody spent a little bit more time to do it, but these work great. And the last one we got to talk about here is a wall of water. And these are just basically a wall of plastic that you can fill up with water and you put it around your plants. And some have used them with a, with a cold frame over top of it and then put these walls of water up and then put the plastic or whatever over top of your plants also. And here's another type right there. So I did some research on these. You just fill the tubes up with, um, they're great plant protectors. You fill them up with water. And that'll protect your plants from the heat. It goes all the way down to 16 degrees Fahrenheit. And they're reusable. And you can get about three of them for $25.95 on Amazon. Last year, they were $22.95. So they, they went up a little bit since then. But that's a good protection device also. All right, in summary, we covered the damage of, by rain and frost, showed you the graph, the frost days, the microclimates, what it, does, what it means to have a microclimate, facts, ways to extend the growing season, and then setting up different types of row covers and garden fabric. And then we covered all different types of season extenders. And if you got any questions, here's my references where I got all my references from. And this, this um, how to build a hoop house right here. This is from Mother Earth News. And it was a pretty good example of um, how to build a low tunnel basically or a hoop house. So there's, um, I, think, I think I sent Gary Gary, I'm pretty sure I sent you that plan too, or a plan. I'm, I'm not sure, but if not, we can get it to them. You did send it to me. Okay, good. So Gary has the handouts and my references and my slide presentation. So they should be all obtainable through our website. Any questions?